I'd like to uh, talk for a few minutes today about a, a review article uh, that my colleagues Ingrid Ordas from Barcelona and Brian Fagan from Robarts Clinical Trials and the University of Western Ontario in London, Ontario, uh, Canada, uh, wrote together about therapeutic uh, drug monitoring in patients with ulcerative colitis who are undergoing anti-TNF therapy. Uh, most of the data is currently available with infliximab or Remicade. And uh, we reviewed a variety of issues related to that. First of all, there's very wide uh, variability uh, between patients and how fast they clear anti-TNF antibodies like uh, infliximab or adalimumab. It looks like uh, males clear faster than females. Patients who take concomitant immunosuppressives clear the drug more slowly. Um, patients with a high body weight might be underdosed uh, if they get a fixed dose of a subcutaneous drug, whereas patients with a low body might, weight might be underdosed if they get a milligram per kilogram dosed intravenous drug. Low serum albumin leads to a very high drug clearance, and high inflammation, as measured by CRP, leads to a very high drug clearance. So if you think about your patient that you might have seen uh, today in clinic, many of those factors are going on, and when they all come together, they can lead to big differences in drug concentration. The second issue is that differences in drug concentration now look like they're linked to efficacy in patients. So we did an interesting analysis in the ACT trials of ulcerative colitis, uh, and recall these were trials uh, where infliximab was compared to placebo in patients with moderate to severely active ulcerative colitis. During the course of those trials, uh, blood levels were obtained at the trough points of concentration. And uh, what uh, was done recently was to go back and divide the patients who received infliximab into quartiles according to their trough concentrations. So the lowest quarter of drug concentrations, the second quarter, the third quarter, and the highest uh, quartile of drug concentrations. And what we found was that the lowest quartile of drug concentrations had response and remission rates over six months and a year that looked very similar to patients who received placebo. The second quartile uh, had uh, outcomes that were perhaps 10% better than the placebo-treated patients. And then when you got up to the third and fourth quartile, you had a dramatically better rates. For instance, at six months, the remission rates were in the 50 to 60 percent range for the patients in the highest two quartiles versus about 10 to 15 percent in patients in the lowest quartile. Again, and that lowest quartile was similar to placebo. So this tells us that higher drug concentrations are associated with markedly better uh, efficacy. Then there's evolving information that if you adjust the uh, drug dosing to raise blood levels in patients who have uh, low blood levels with your initial dosing regimen, that you can pay, bring patients who initially didn't respond into a clinical response or clinical remission. So it's, uh, the, the review article kind of ties up these three factors, what drives differences between patients in drug concentrations, how the differences in drug concentrations impact efficacy, and finally uh, gets into how raising drug uh, dosing through more intensive dosing regimens can bring up those subtherapeutic concentrations and put patients into uh, response or remission. So this is a very different way of thinking about biologic therapy than what we've thought uh, about originally, where you just treated patients with a starting dose, and if they didn't respond or, or responded and then lost response, you just empirically raised the dose uh, without doing any testing.